Welcome to episode 10 of the Panorama Van Build. Today we're going to do something really cool. We are going to build a whole home theater entertainment system. It's going to be based on a very small video projector, the Fire Stick Amazon TV, and an amazing JBL speaker. So hang tight, I'm going to show you how I put it all together. Now if you're a subscriber, you know that episode 10 was supposed to be about a generator baffle quiet box. I worked on that project two weeks and given the constraints of the size that I had to use to get it to fit inside the van, it was a disaster. It did not work out very well and in the end it didn't make it quiet enough. So I ended up not doing that video but if you stick around to the end I'll tell you what happened, how it turned out and what I learned from it and how to actually make it quieter. So let's look at sound. Originally I had this. I had this little can speaker and I've used it for other projects. And for such a little speaker, and it's not expensive, it puts out a good good sound and had good bass. But the problem with this one is it does not have uh, the volume control on the side. So what happens is the Fire Stick can't control the volume through the Wi-Fi, so this just won't work. Um, I was going to mount it with the camera, but then I got online and did some research on what is the best portable Wi-Fi speaker out there and hands down this one just kept coming up the JBL Flip 4 which is now owned by Harman Kardon. If you've ever seen their equipment that's some great equipment too. The difference in sound is phenomenal. The sound that comes out of this is huge. So not only we're going to have a big picture this is going to give us big sound. So here's some specs on it. It's got 12 hours of playtime. It is waterproof down to 10 feet I believe for 30 minutes. I think that's what the IPX7 is. You can connect it to other speakers. If you have two, you can do a left and a right, or you can connect it to other ones that just have more sound. And it also functions as a speakerphone. So here's what the unit looks like. It's not very big, about the size, about the height of a hand, and you can hold it like this. And so it recharges here. It also has the 3.5 millimeter jack there. You have your power button here. And when you turn it on, it'll show you how much it's charged. And it looks good too, it comes in different colors. Now it is a little pricey. It's right about $100. The sound is just amazing. Now for content, we're going to use the Fire TV Stick. I've heard about this for years. I put off getting one. I didn't kind of believe all the hype. Man, was I wrong. Man, was I wrong. I actually started using this, and yesterday I canceled my Netflix, and tomorrow I'm going to cancel my DirecTV. This is going to save me a lot of money. This is going to be fun. It's simple. It's easy. Little little flaky to set up the first time, but wow, what an experience. Good value. So this is going to be our projector. I looked, a lot of, I looked around at a lot of different ones and I had some budget constraints. What got me interested in this one is that it is a true 720p native resolution. So the resolution is very good. It's quoting 150 minutes of battery. We'll talk about that. That's not really accurate. It does have a battery in it, but you cannot rely on that. Uh, so it's got some neat features. The resolution is what's really impressive, 1280 by 720. Now, what you need to do is use it definitely in a very darkened room. We're going to use it in the van, and I use it in the evening. I'll be making some blackout curtains, and I'll be able to use it in more light, but you really need to be in a very darkened room to use it. What's so amazing, it comes with this little tripod stand. We won't be using that, but that's helpful if you want to use it in the house. But look how small this thing is just fits in the palm of your hand. This is the focus ring right here. And this is a little fidgety. What happens here is there's a dead space in the middle. So when you go to focus it, go past where the focus is and then there'll be a dead space and then you can ease into it. Also something I noticed, what you wanna do is wait to set the fine focus until the unit is warmed up. I thought the, I thought the focus ring was moving um, while I was watching the movie, but what happens is when it's cold and then it warms up, it shifts, it, it something internally shifts a little bit. So let it run five minutes or so and then set your final um, focus. And then what happens is when you come back to use it again, start it up, you don't need to mess with the focus and just know that as it warms up, everything will come into even sharper focus. So let's look at all the jacks on the back. One thing is if you're just listening to it, uh, if you're just using the system for yourself, it has a headphone jack. So you can just plug in a set of headphones right here in a standard jack and you'll be fine. Also, here's the on-off button you have to press and hold. It's a little annoying because it's so small. There is an AV jack that comes with this cable that you can plug in here, and then you can, in, you can put in uh, the older source audio video. Also know that do not lose the remote. It is very tiny. You cannot use the system without the remote. Some of these remotes were shipped with a batch of bad batteries, so you might have to get a battery to put in it, and it is a type 
CR2025. So there are some special needs on the power supply. So this does run off 5 volts USB, but you have to have at least a 2.5 amp USB adapter. So you have to look on the label and see if it has that much power. And I will link below to all these things and I'll put an adapter down there that you can use that will give you that power. Now battery. So let's say you want to watch a movie on low power mode. You're probably going to get maybe an hour and a half. Uh, if you want to do it on high power mode, it's going to be less than an hour. I found on eco mode, the picture looked just about as good. So I used the eco mode, but it needs to be plugged in if you want to get through a two hour movie, because if the battery completely dies, you're not going to just be able to plug it in. It's going to have to charge up quite a bit before you can use it. So that's one of the special things that you need to know about for making sure it has enough power. If you give it enough power, it's happy. If the screen starts doing very strange things, making strange images, cutting in and out, then you're low on power, you're not supplying it enough power. It comes with a USB cord that plugs in right here. You can just put your, your uh, movie on a memory stick, on a USB stick and put that in there. It also uses an SD card for that. Now, one thing you will have to provide is an HDMI adapter because this uses a different size one. So I bought this one and this one has both. So on this side, you have the standard HDMI and on this side it has, I think this is called a micro and I think this is called a mini. So mine just happens to have both. So what happens is I will put my mini plug into here and then I'll be able to put my fire stick into that. Now one thing this projector does not have is a zoom ring. So it's a fixed distance. You change the size of the screen by moving the projector closer or farther. So at this point or before this point, you can bring your projector out and plug it in. I knew that I wanted mine to be as big as possible, but I wanted it to be up against the ceiling so that I could lay down on a pillow and see it without hurting my neck. So I knew my width and I knew how high I wanted it to be. So without the screen, you don't need the screen to do this. So without the screen, just take your projector and move it back and forth and try different places where you're going to need to mount it. So for me, I had a couple mounting options. I had the surface here. I could hang it down here. I could slide it all the way back to here. I could mount it here and slide it back here. Well, I found out that it has a pretty good, uh, pretty good width. So I ended up finding that mounting it, hanging from here, hanging right under this space here was just perfect to get the screen size I wanted. Then also what I did was I undid this wood piece and I ran two heavy duty USB extension cords through the woodwork on down and underneath to a 12 volt supply with a USB high amp USB adapter. And then this will be my power source. So the screen material you want to use is this is white blackout material. And I'll put a link down below where you can buy this. It's kind of got a shiny backside that's got more of a waterproof coating on it. And then this is the white scratchy side. It's what you want. It's more of a matte finish and it's got a little grit to it. So this will be the projection side. Now what you want to do is make sure you cut this bigger. Width-wise, it's, it's not going to change. But do cut it a lot longer than you think you need. And then build the whole thing out where you think because you're going to need a little extra room. Also remember, if you're watching a VGA screen, it's going to be big and square. But if you're watching a movie in the letterbox it's going to be long and not tall so you need to leave, leave enough screen where you can watch all those modes so this is just two pieces of little small trim board one on the front and one on the back now i did try stapling it and i guess my stapler is not good enough or my staples weren't long enough so that did not work so what i ended up doing is drilling a very small hole and using some very small screws it doesn't take much of them so also lay it out on the floor and make sure you get it good and flat because the better job you do on this, the less wrinkles you're gonna have. Now mine is not perfect, but what I found is you can be pretty close and when it's dark and you're showing it, it's gonna be okay. Like this, uh, this edge up here is a little bit loose, kind of mess that a little bit. Now across the top, so this is the same piece on the back. I put a little bit of fuzzy Velcro on here to protect the woodwork because I'm going from side to side. So there's no Velcro on the other, on the cabinet side to hook to it. This is just for protection. So this is a piece of quarter round. I liked it because what happens is the image comes right over the edge. So if the image is a little tall and it overlaps up here, it's okay. It's not even really noticeable, but I also needed a little lip to be able to hold it on my bracket. Everything up, I just used again, one of these pieces of metal and I folded it in this Z shape and I just found somewhere to tuck it in. But I have a little flip down door here and so I don't have to be permanent. I just set that there and that gives me this little piece up here that, that holds behind that piece of wood on the back of the screen. So what I do then is I just take my screen with the quarter round part up and I put it up in the corner over here 
and just put it up on the corner here and then I just I just slide back till I can take that little piece of metal and that little piece of metal just sits right here but it's enough tension to keep the rod in place now it's not going to stay there while you're driving but it's going to hold it in place to watch the movie so my screen ended up being 47 inches across I was hoping for 50. I could have made a much bigger screen if I had dropped it down and gone under these cabinets but it would have come way down here and I would have been really propped up to see it and your feet might be in the wrong place so I'm happy with this this turned out well I like the size of it so one great thing I use quite a bit of is this galvanized metal strapping this is over in the low and lows over in the lumber department this, there's a whole different all sorts of these in different kinds and shapes but this is used for uh, holding down roofing trusses and roofing systems now what I like about it is it's thick enough to where you can bend it by hand for the big pieces and then for the small pieces you can use a wrench to make little bends but it's strong enough to where it'll hold its shape and it can it's a little tough to bend but once you get it there it holds the shape and this has been very helpful to me so sometimes I'll just cover it with black tape sometimes I paint it um, black so what I did is I took this outside into my van and I found a way to now I could either uh, undo a wood piece unscrew it and then put it in here and tighten it down that's one way to mount it but what I had is I had a cubby hole so what I did is I took it and I bent it into shape all different shapes and then I, I could hook it over the edge of the cubby hole and then I had a mounting plate right here so how that turned out is like this here's our finished product this is a fully functional projector with a fire stick tv all attached and has wireless bluetooth sound this is all there is this is all you see now it's going to kind of sit in the shadows so you won't see all this stuff in the back here but here's where the magic happens so here's my metal piece that i shaped around that'll hook over the edge of a bin and then i did have to do one screw because you're going to have to have something that just really holds it down tight so i did do one screw but i put it under where the bin door pretty much covers over it so that you really won't see the hole later when I, if, when I remove this. But I want something that stays there all the time that's gonna be firm. So I bent this in the shape. There's two zip ties here holding, it, holding this piece on. One of them goes under the projector and one of them goes over the fire stick. So we have the fire stick here, goes into that adapter for the USB, and plugs into here. Then the power cord for the fire stick comes out here and the power cord for the projector comes out here. Now I zip tie them together because you don't want to put any stress on that joint. So then all we need to power this whole thing is just these two USB ports, one for the projector, one for the fire stick. Everything else is wireless and we've got our projection system all done. So I wanted to give you an idea about how small this projector is. So here is the ceiling of the van and right there is the projector. Now one thing is uh, the back of the van flips up and converts into a full bathroom with a shower and that black rod is a shower curtain rod. So during the shower that'll either have to be covered or I'll have to remove it. Now to do the fine tuning I went ahead and put it over the, over the edge up in here. There's the screw in there and I did put a little wedge in here because you're going to have to fine tune things. I'll probably wrap that in some black tape so it's not as noticeable but that holds it in nice and tight and doesn't move and then I just plugged in the projector and plugged in the power stick and then tucked all the wires back here and up here and behind so from the back of the van here's our view of the screen and there's our little projector all right so i've set up here and i'm going to try and shoot some video here so it's still it's not completely dark outside but it is in the evening so i'm gonna i mean aimed at the screen here i'm going to turn off these lights in here so you can see the screen I'm, I'm having to be off the side to the side so that you can so that i'm not in the image so first thing when you turn it on this is the screen you're going to see so the first thing you want to do is put it on eco mode that's standard that's eco that's bright so there's not a great deal of difference but it uses a lot less power on the eco and the fan is whisper quiet so i don't have time to go through all the options here i'll post a video where I'd use this projector in a conversion for a Land Rover. And I think in part two, I'll post part two at the end of the home theater and that should go over all the settings and what I had to do with this. So now what we'll do is I'm just gonna exit this menu and we'll be in Amazon. 
and uh, there's a lot of videos out there that you can use to learn how to use the Amazon Fire Stick. Just do Amazon Fire Stick setup. As far as free movies and free TV, I'll leave that up to you. Just do a search on that and you can set these apps up. Some of the apps, I don't know exactly what's legal, what's not legal. So I'm going to leave that up to you. You can do this research. Just do a search on YouTube for uh, Fire Stick free movies or free TV and it'll tell you how to set all that up. So here is the main screen of... So what I had to do was go to over here to settings, go to controllers and Bluetooth devices, and then go down to other Bluetooth devices. And then what it'll do is you just say add Bluetooth device, and then turn on your speaker, your uh, JBL flip speaker, just turn it on and then do add Bluetooth devices and then it'll search and it will automatically connect and then you won't have to ever do that again. So those are, uh, also you'll need to hook it up to the internet. So when you first start it up, I have mine hooked up as a hotspot to my mobile phone. So wherever I go, I can access it. And so, but each time I turn on the Fire Stick, it wants, I have to reconnect it to my hotspot, which is real simple, and then it's good to go. So what I've done is so you can see the quality of the screen and the resolution, I recorded a couple clips for you. I've listened to the clips and the speaker sounds much better in person, so it's you know not the greatest. But um, if you wanna also look up on YouTube the uh, reviews of the JBL Flipboard, there's some good sound ones there where they will compare it to other ones and it is quite remarkable. So here's the clips. Oh my god, we're in different people's bodies! Bethany, don't look at it! No! I'm an overweight middle-aged man. Wait a second, where's my phone? Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. I think we've become the avatars we chose. Welcome to Jumanji! So if you stuck around to the end, you're curious to know what happened to the baffle box. Well, here it is. Here is the box. I did build it. I worked on this for about two weeks and it still works wonderfully because it will store the air conditioner no problem. So I can take the air conditioner and it'll fit in the box. No problem whatsoever. Also makes a seat. But what I found out was in order to get it quiet enough, I was going to have to put a lot of sound deadening insulation in there. And by the time I put enough insulation in there to make any difference in sound, now the box was too small inside and it was prone to overheating. So that was disappointing, but I used my decibel meter and I did some testing and this is what I found out. So the box without the insulation only dropped the decibels about maybe two. So it wasn't effective, but here's what I did do. I did some testing with putting some boards in front of it, some insulation boards propping up and different things. And the biggest reduction, which was about 15 decibels, was simply taking the generator and putting it on the opposite side of the van. So if you're gonna be hanging out on this side of the van, Putting it over here is what dropped it the most because the sound is just bouncing off and going out. Now, if you're inside the van and your head's in the back and you're watching TV, simply putting the generator right up here by the tire, um, drop the sound. If with the air conditioner running, you can barely hear it. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the home theater. And the next episode, I've got something really cool too. It's going to be a four camera security system. So this is gonna be great with a great big monitor where you can see all four of the cameras all at once. So that's the next one. And then I think the one after that is I've got an idea for a curtain rail system that's going to have thick insulated curtains to encompass the whole inside. So it'll black it out and, in, and insulate it. So those are things that are coming up. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming along. I'll see you in the next one.